Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about some financial ratios you can use to assess companies' risk. So first we'll talk about liquidity ratios and next we'll talk about solvency ratios. They're both balance sheet type ratios that you can use to assess the likelihood of a company defaulting. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. We do a lot of stock analysis on this channel. So if you're into that kind of thing, hit that subscribe button so you can see more related videos. The balance sheet is one of the four financial statements, and it tells you a company's financial position at a given point in time. So it tells us the company's assets, their liabilities, meaning what they owe, and the remainder of, is the equity. So when you want to look at a company's creditworthiness, if you're interested in buying the company's bonds or maybe just investing in the company as a stockholder and you're worried about their, their creditworthiness, their ability to pay their debts, one of the things you often want to do is compare the size of their liabilities to the size of their assets. But it's important to realize that not all assets are created equal. Within a company's balance sheet, you have assets that are considered current assets, things that you're going to be able to convert into cash within the next year. So we're talking about things like cash itself, receivables, that means money that's owed to you, that's an asset inventory or prepaid expenses these are very different than long-term assets like your factories and your land or even your intangible assets like maybe the company owns several patents similarly not all liabilities are created equal we often want to differentiate between what's called current liabilities where they are due within the next year versus long-term liabilities these are your mortgages your major debts that will come due in 10, 20, 30 years. So when we want to assess a firm's liquidity, remember liquidity is the ability of a company to meet its short-term obligations. We're often concerned with current liabilities, not all liabilities, just current. So with that in mind, here's one of the first financial metrics people look at. It's called working capital. You add up all of your current assets, subtract your current liabilities, and that's your working capital. The higher the working capital, the safer a company is. If you're looking at a company with negative working capital, what that tells you is their current liabilities they're going to have to pay off within one year are greater than their current asset. This is a serious concern because what is the company going to do? They're going to have to issue new liabilities or they're going to have to perhaps sell off some long-term assets that really they don't want to sell off. Okay, so one of the major problems of working capital is that it's very hard to compare across two different companies. If you look at Intel and AMD, they're very similar, operating in the same space. Uh, let's say that one of them has a working capital of $3 billion. Is that good or bad? Well, if it's AMD, that's excellent. That's very safe, given their size. But if it's Intel, maybe that's not very much working capital, okay? So it's very hard to say. A better way to look at it is the current ratio. This is another liquidity measure, but it gets around that size problem. It's calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. So right away, when you look at a company's current ratio, you can see if they have a short-term liquidity problem. Any current ratio below one indicates a serious problem because that means your short-term debts are greater than your, your current assets. So as a general rule, I like to see a current ratio above 1. I hope it's a little bit more than that, though, at least 1.5. But again, it varies by industry. Okay, so another useful liquidity ratio is called the quick ratio, sometimes called the acid test ratio. It's calculated as current assets minus inventory, all divided by current liabilities. So it's kind of like a modified current ratio. Now, why do we subtract inventory? The reason here is that by removing inventory, we can detect some problems with slow moving inventory. Some companies may have very excellent current ratios, but there could be an issue where their inventory keeps increasing year after year. They do make some sales, but on the net, their inventory is gradually increasing. And that is a serious problem that is often hidden by other financial metrics. So if I see a company with a current ratio of like three and a quick ratio of one, that, that's a disconnect there. That tells me, wait a second, so inventory accounts for quite a big chunk of your current assets. Maybe you're having problems selling your inventory. Okay, so let's talk about solvency ratios. 
Unlike liquidity, solvency ratios capture the company's ability to stay in business, to pay its long-term debts. So the first ratio is one that I use in a lot of my videos, is total liabilities divided by total assets. So when you think about the accounting equation there on your balance sheet, assets equal liabilities plus equity. So every asset you have is either funded by debt or equity. And the greater portion of your assets that are funded by debt, of course, the riskier your company would be. Liabilities to assets ratio is often called financial leverage. It's a very important thing to look at, okay? Because the more highly leveraged a company is, the riskier it is. Because unlike dividends to shareholders, interest payments to your debt holders are not optional. They are mandatory. And so to the extent that your company goes through some hard times, it's going to be that much riskier because you, you have to keep paying that interest expense. And you eventually have to pay the debt back. Okay, so the last solvency ratio I'll touch on is the interest coverage ratio. Essentially, you take your profits for the year and you divide them by your interest expense for that year. So what you're doing here is saying, okay, out of my total profits, how many times do I have my interest expense covered? Let's suppose your interest coverage ratio was one. That would mean your entire profits before taxes are just enough to pay your interest. That would be really bad. That would be a really risky situation. An interest coverage ratio of at least seven or eight would be much more comforting, right? Out of all my profits, I take one sixth or one seventh of them and I pay my interest expense. I'm in no immediate danger. Okay, so here I'm looking at two companies, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSM, and ABV, ABBV. Let's look at some of their balance sheet ratios. So as far as liquidity, uh, this in terms of millions of dollars, you can see that TSM has $15 billion of working capital. ABV has negative $1 billion roughly. Now we can't really make a comparison because these companies are, are different sizes. So one thing we can do is look at the current ratios. And there you see that TSM is able to cover their current liabilities with their current assets 1.75 times, almost two times, almost twice as many current assets as current liabilities. Whereas AbbVie, their current liabilities are actually greater than their current assets by just a little bit here. When we look at the quick ratio, remember that quick ratio, you're taking out inventory from those current assets and comparing them to current liabilities. TSM still has a very healthy quick ratio, whereas AbbVie's quick ratio drops to 0.81, pretty risky. Now in terms of solvency, liabilities to assets ratio for Taiwan Semiconductor is about 32%. So their liabilities represent just about 32% of their assets. Pretty healthy there. Whereas for ABV, it's close to 90%. Now as a consequence of this, look at the price to earnings ratio of TSM versus ABV. TSM commands a 27 times PE ratio compared to 10 for ABV. And yes, part of this difference in PE ratios is because these two companies have different growth rates in their earnings. I do understand that. But you have to understand a big part of it is their bankruptcy risk. And right now, you have to pay 27 times earnings for a share of TSM versus just 10 for ABV. ABV is a fabulous company. Why can you pay a price like this? Well, again, part of the reason is their riskiness on their balance sheet. Okay, so in conclusion, I hope you can see how both of these kinds of ratios, liquidity and solvency ratios, can help you assess companies' risk profiles and ultimately be a, one of the steps you use to filter out which companies you want to invest in. So I hope you learned something from the video. If you did, please smash that like button. It helps me quite a lot. Uh, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching.